the big 80s, big hair, big varieties, and big changes for the Lincoln scent. <laughs> this is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You and thanks for watching my latest video. Today we're going to look from 1980 to 1989 at all the Lincoln scent varieties that we can discover and also all the changes and all the confusion and the new words that were coined during this era of minting the Lincoln Memorial scent. Before we get started, I would like to remind all the viewers the Lincoln scent varieties that you see in this video, there's several of them. Let's say for each date, there's several RPMs for each date, there's often several uh, double dies for each date, and that each one of them have die marks, and you have to match that exactly with your coin if you think you found one of the varieties. I use coppercoins.com and I use Konica Variety Vista. You can visit those websites and actually look up your coin and try to match it to the images. I also want to remind everyone that not all of these are worth a lot of money. Some of them are only worth $25 in Mint State 65. Some of them are only worth 12, especially your RPMs. They are fun to find, but very few of them are worth very much money. Or any. Now the 1980s was huge. At first, you start off with a normal 1980 3.1 gram copper planchet and then from there you go to 1982 and 82 saw seven different varieties created large dates small dates with a D without a D then you had the copper plated zinc planchet which was 2.5 uh, grams and then you had the 3.11 grams uh, copper planchet and it was split between all of them except for the 1982 D small date it was not supposed to be on a copper planchet took 35 years to find one and it has created such confusion. Then the plating process was not perfected. So you have plating bubbles, split plating, plating disturbances, and a lot of it with the die wear included look like double dies and they're not double dies and it's just created a lot of confusion when it comes to the coins. Plating blisters is another thing that people confuse. They could come in all shapes, all sizes, anywhere on the coin. A lot of people confuse those with extra letters, extra design features, or extra numbers, and such is not the case. Um, the you know, zinc planchets, they would have impurities on them, and it would create pockets where the plating would not adhere to the planchet. And you can actually poke some of them with a toothpick, the plating blisters, on some of these coins. The 1980s heralded the end of RPMs. No more RPMs after 1989 because starting in 1990 they started putting the mint mark on the dies so that whenever a die is created doubled then that mint mark is also doubled. Prior to 1990, 89 and back, the mint mark would never be doubled as part of the double die. Okay, That was always one of the key things to help you identify. And then you have another transitional era in 83 where people were finding a couple of copper planchets that were dated 1983 that weighed 3.11 grams and they're not supposed to. We're going to get on with covering and looking at some of these images, some more of these images of these varieties. I'm going to go really kind of fast. I'm going to show you the images a little bit and we're going to maybe explain it and maybe some of the values on them. But we need to move pretty quick because there's a lot of them and I'm not going to cover them all. In 1980 you have a double die of verse. This is the FS101. You can see the splits here where the dates doubled. Also on the Liberty. When you go over to coppercoins.com you can look through and see a, even a better image. You can also look at die marks to help identify this variety. And you also have the 1980 D over S, which is now no longer considered a D over S, it's die damage. Earlier die states showed that this is more die damage, it's not another mint mark, so that's been debunked. But you'll still, I show it here because you'll still see this in holders. In 1980, you also have some RPMs. This is one of the RPMs to look for. And remember, when you're looking at RPMs, they are also varieties and they do have die marks to help identify them. So if you think you see an extra mint mark over another mint mark. Then look for the die marks like right here. If you get on copper coins you can look and you can see these little tiny marks. They're going to be on every one of them. Now there are late die stages, early die stages 
and medium die stages. But for the most part, you're going to have some die marks that's going to identify it. In 1981, you have a double die as well. It's not one of your more obvious ones, but you can see it on top of the god here. There's a doubled god also on Wii. And here's some die marks as well. Most of these dates do have a RPM or a double die for the date meant. 1982, and this is the double die reverse. And this is a good one to get. This one's worth you know, a good amount of money on this one. This is one you want to try to find. Here's the listing on it, and it shows you here the pricing. You know, it's a, it's a pretty rare coin. It's one you definitely want to try to find. The 1982D also, is, also has an RPM as well. Uh, most of these have multiple RPMs. I think there's four or more for 1982. And you can see listings on Konica and you can see listings here on Copper Coins as well. It is 1983 and 1983 double die averse. And this one has the thickness of the bottom of the three. You see a little die chip in the eight. That would help be a pup or a die mark that you can identify it with. Also shows some doubled uh, on the Liberty. And in God We Trust, and on We, um, and you see the marks on it. So it's always good to go down through these and take a look. Uh, the also is another 1983D. This one is the RPM repunch mint mark. And also for 1983, you want to look for a copper planchet. The 1983 struck on a copper planchet. It's a 3.06 grams is how much this one weighed. Typical weight is 3.11 grams, but anything that's in that 3 grams range is going to be on the incorrect planchet. They're supposed to be uh, you know, 2.5. Uh, 1983 uh, double die reverse. This is another one that you want to look for. This is a pretty good one here. That's another one to look for on the 83. And also on the 8, 1983, you have what they call a counter clash. This one has a cud on it. Now, cud's a rim to rim die break. It's just shaped like a cud, so that's what they call it that. And here's the recessed area where this planchet metal filled in here. This is all raised. The counter clash is if you look here, the, cla the dies clashed already once and they clashed again. In 1984, you have a double die. You can see the little doubled here, the split in the nine, which is one of the indicators. Here's a little bit more on the eight, a little extra thickness here at the bottom of the eight. Also on the R here, you can see at the end, and other lettering. And like I said, go through these, look at all the, the pickup points. You want to look at your die marks. Here's a, another uh, double die averse. This one here shows is the most famous one is the double ear. Everybody's looking for the double ear. And it's a nice one to get. It's, it's a real beautiful coin this one is, but that's one of them that's real obvious. A lot of people look for that one. Now here's another double die reverse for the 84. And as you can see, America has uh, the splits for an extra thickness that you want to see with doubling. And you know, just kind of you scroll down through the images and you look for this. Here's a 1984 uh, RPM. You can see the little bit of the mint mark inside here, the, the weaker first punched mint mark and you know there's die marks to look for on those and then you have the 1985 and this one's I put this one on here because it's it's a double die that is not very uh, obvious and you can easily miss this one you're probably going to find it easier on a, a high grade coin than you are a low grade coin but then again here's a die mark here as well and you know it's important eventually to know all your uh, different classes of double dies, all eight, and then you can help you understand what you're looking for when you're looking at coins and double dies. Here is a 1985, and it is an obvious repunch mint mark, and it's a really nice one. I kind of like this one. I believe um, the top. I think this is a top 100 Konica. I think the 001 is. And so I, for obvious reasons. And then here is the 1986, and you have a double die reverse here and you have a little line beside the columns. I've seen these posted before in groups and that's another one that people get confused a little bit on. And if they see maybe plate, split plating or they see a, a long plating uh, issue or a bubble or a, a blister or whatever and they think it's doubling but it's not. It, it, it's not doubled. You know, plating blisters can make a coin look like it's doubled a little bit so can die wear. Here you have 
an 86 it's a double die obverse and you can see the where the arrows are pointing out where the die marks are and as well where the the doubles at and here's another as 86 rpm it's a repunch mint mark here on this it's pretty obvious you can find these i found a few of these myself and then here's the 87 and this is a double die right here you can see there's just a little bit of the split here and the thickening of the bottom of the nine and there's a, just a little bit on the liberty that you've got different die marks that shows you what to look for there's a lot of die files lines die scratches and things um, that are not cleaned that just they're on the die these are all raised here when you see those those are raised and here's a 1987 repunch mint mark and it shows the die marks and all and it's it's a nice one and then you have the 1987 and this is the double die reverse this one is real confusing so you, you must examine this one and know the die marks for this to see the this is not the best image for it but look for these die marks right here if you think you see the doubling look for the little die marks and if you find them it's possible that you do have it but this is one of them that's going to be confusing that's why I put it up here and here's the 1988D double die obverse and this shows the splitting here and the double at the bottom of the eight and that is one of the things to look for on the nine sometimes the nine is just thicker up in here but a lot of times it's thicker down here and it has a little bit of a split and depending on how much how wide this the splitting is on these depends on how much thicker the lettering is but it will be thicker but you also have die marks to look for as well and you should always look for the die marks here's another 1988 uh, double the ear on this one and uh, this one's not as strong as the 1984 but it's a real nice one to look for as well you don't hear a lot about it but you know it's got some value to it as well if you look at the, the listings on these you can see the values on some of them and they're not extremely value valuable on, on most of these double dies or not but they're they do have some value to them but you can see the what I'm talking about on the nines a little thickness here you know and that's that's one of the things you can do you can navigate coppercoins.com it's a really good site to look when it's got some images Kanika has some images too but not as many as uh, copper coins now you go to another 1988 and this was the double die reverse and you can see the thickness of the FG, which is the designer initials, other die marks. Here's the 1988D RPM, a repunch mint mark, and it shows die marks. If you think you have this, see, you can see that they're split. There's a little plating issues here. That fools a lot of people. Look for the die marks too. Once you, you, and a lot of times if you find the die marks, you've probably got that coin and you can always post a picture or ask an app. Now, for the 1988, you also have the reverse of an 89 and this one is identified by the shape of the designer initials and also when you're looking at the a and the m the spacing this over here on the right is the 1988 reverse this is the 1989 and as you can see the shape of the designer initials the height, the width here in between the memorial. All those are the way you identify this. And I put this example in here because this is an example of the 89 and this is how you know that. There is the same space here. Here it's even, flush. So that helps you identify one. This one was probably polished down a little bit or abraded by a mint employee to remove class marks there's obviously a little bit of die mark here or something there I can't really identify it and that makes it look similar to this this was on a 1989 so you don't want to be fooled you're looking for a 1988 with this reverse right here and then another little surprise was all the way in 1989 someone found a copper planchet 1989D and it weighed 3.1 grams so it looks like to me you can find might be able to find about any date in the 80s if you can find one all the way to 89 and we have them all the way back to 82 D small dates you know like I said the small dates 3.1 grams you know if you find one of them um, that actually has to be the 82 small small date D but you know from then all the way up to 89 there's there's been some found so you just never know here's 1989 D and it's a double die verse and it's known for the thickness here and I can see that it looks like there's a little bit of plating issue here 
Uh, also, you got little areas where it's showing the a little doubled here underneath the cloak. And here's the die mark. That's how you identify all these. You just look through here and look for the die mark. See, it's another plating issue. That's not the doubled die part. This is just showing a die mark here. And that's one of the things that people get confused with when it comes to these uh, Lincoln scents. And this is a double die a verse. And as you can see, the, the thickness of the letter and the die marks, and it shows you all those things. 1989D009, this one is a Konica Top 100 as well. And like I said, you know, you can look and see the die marks on that. And then here's the 89 No Mint Mark Plane, which is Philadelphia. And that's normal on these scents. I'd love to see a, a mint mark on the Philadelphia mints. And this one's the 09. And you can see the thickness of the lettering, as I was telling you before. Yeah, but you also have other die marks to look for. If you think you have a coin, a lot of times people will see die deterioration doubling and they think that it's thicker because, and it's double die, but it's not. It's not the same. You know, this is other die marks you need to, to use as well, not just what the appearance of the date looks like. So anyways, I hope the, this helped you a little bit and give you some information on what to look for. There's a lot more RPMs to look for. There are other double dies to look for for each date and mint mark. And thank you for watching my video and please like, share, comment and click that little bell beside the subscribe button and have a great day.